So I'm here again with Sakiko, who is the founder of Somo Su, which is an organic chocolate brand that doesn't use sugar. It uses natural alternatives to sugar. And we've done a previous video where we went through all the um, the natural and healthy um, sugar alternatives that they are. Now, I wanted to talk to Sakiko again because um, one of the most used uh, natural alternatives is erythritol. And there's been some research and literature coming out saying that it's not healthy. Um, and I think it had something to do with it with a cardiovascular issue. And um, and I know that Sakiko has some has some strong feelings about this, but you know, because it's something you know I use in my baking. It's something that she uses in her chocolate. And uh, when when we first met and we talked about it, you said that you felt that the research ha had not been understood or something and, and people were sort of barking up the wrong tree. So first of all, can we just start and tell us what erythritol is and what this res what people are now saying about it? In, in, how is it dangerous? Can you just talk us through that? Sure. Um, it's a natural sweet compound that's about 60 to 70 percent as sweet as sugar. It's found in many different plants, um, fruits and vegetables and uh, mushrooms as well and fermented foods. So um, wine, um, tamari, soy sauce and so on. So you're probably eating it quite regularly, <laughs> even if you're not using People it. People are having it thing. anyway. Yes. Yes, that's right. Um, it's also produced endogenously in the body. Um, so, for example, you might take a collagen supplement and um, uh, your body also produces collagen. You might use erythritol as a sweetener. Your body also produces erythritol actually. Right. Um, and uh, from, from me, I like to take a first principles <laughs> look at any ingredient and understand what is its metabolic pathway. And in the case of erythritol, because of its small molecular size, um, its metabolic pathway is that it is fully excre excreted, it goes through, washes through, and goes out in the urine 100% unchanged, has no metabolic um, impact, doesn't have, that's why it doesn't have calories, it's not metabolized by the microbiome either. So if it goes out unchanged, does, does that yes. mean your body is not absorbing it in any way? Is it um, a bit like yeah. fiber, because fiber is indigestible? Yes. And so the pathway is different. Uh, it's yeah. more in terms of fiber, it's because of the bulkiness. In terms of erythritol, it's it actually just kind of washes through and out because of its tiny molecular size. Um, so it is absorbed, but then excreted 100% unchanged. Right. Yeah. And uh, so what is this research? Because I've been approached by people on Ageless. I had a friend in the States who sort of sent me an article and saying, have you seen yes. this? And I freaked yeah. out. I went, oh my yeah. goodness. You know, I, I bake with, um, you know, stevia and erythritol in a granulated form and monk fruit and erythritol. So it's something that I use a lot in my life. Yes. Um, so I was a little alarmed. So when I met you and you said, uh, 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 I don't think so, I was very happy. So what are they saying about it? Well, um, I was alarmed too. I mean, the the way that the headlines were. Yes, yes of yeah. course. And I'm I I'm really agnostic about any uh, ingredients. I I I just uh, have concluded through all the years of research that there are sweet compounds in nature that are not unhealthy, that are actually health beneficial. Some of them, and and I counted erythritol in that group, and so I was uh, alarmed by the headlines as well. But I went straight to read the entire paper carefully and analyze it and that um actually takes a lot of work and effort and yes, you are very scum. qualified sorry sorry to interrupt i know yes yes tell us so that people know oh, what yes. qualifications are yes i have an msc in personalized nutrition and functional medicine it's four-year degree um i studied biochemistry uh biology physiology chemistry and i also did my dissertation on fructose and its impact on uh, atherosclerosis uh, mechanism review um and throughout those four years you know all i did 
really was read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of papers and learn how to read papers, how to analyze papers, how to look at the, uh, the data carefully. And, and, and yes, and, and actually through that four years, those four years of, of intense studies, um, what was the most, one of the most alarming things to me was how flawed so much uh, research is in terms of either just like being poorly designed or actually coming to a conclusion in the abstract, sort of, I think, to get attention. But sometimes the a conclusion is, is very different from the actual data in the study that you look right. through. And, um, or it might, you might see this typical with sweet ingredients, like X affects the microbiome and, and, and as a conclusion. But, you know, everything we eat, every emotion we feel affects the microbiome so it doesn't really mean anything to say x affects the microbiome like okay how uh, do do we even understand the microbiome well enough you know to fully i mean it's just i can go on about that but so so yes so this research um study um failed to address at you know first when you're doing when you're going to research a, a certain pathway or a topic you kind of read around the subject um so so these researchers, I, I believe, uh, should have um, read around the subject of erythritol. No, they should have known, and they did know, that it is produced in the body endogenously. Um, and they failed to see that their study, I'm trying to make it you know, simple. Yeah, um, yeah. Basically, it said A causes B, but it could very well be that what their study was uh, showing, observing, is that B causes A. Um, so, so it was a reverse causality situation. So right. I'll just make it very simple. So there were yeah. little, lots of different parts to the study, but the main, and by the way, this is one study. This is not like a whole body of research. It's one study. It's all, um, all this, all, all of this. Poverty was caused from one study. One study. That's right. That's was right. it a big because study? Was it quite a, it, how big it was, it? it was published in, in nature. That's a very big uh, journal. So that's, right. uh, so that's why it got a lot of headlines, uh, yeah. I think. I, I and and I really, um, I, I really I can't get wrap, wrap my head around how it was published and peer reviewed and so on because of all the many right. flaws. But the main flaw right. is that um, first of all, it was not like okay, let's take a um, the, the main part of the study where they draw the main conclusions. It's not like okay, let's take a group of people and yeah. put them in two groups and so on. It was looking back at data that was already available and scouring that data. Ah. And this data was on uh, uh, people um, who had very, uh, quite severe cardiometabolic dysfunction um, diseases related to cardiovascular disease, metabolic disease. Um, And they saw that those who were more sick had higher levels of erythritol in their bodies. and as I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you in this video, but yeah. erythritol has been shown previously to be a very strong free radical scavenger, an antioxidant, okay. produced by a pathway called the pentose phosphate pathway produced internally. Right. Um, so this pathway is upregulated in people who are more sick. So they said erythritol is causing them to be sick. <laughs> But actually, they're already sick. <laughs> this pathway is upregulated. One of the outputs of the pathway is erythritol. We don't, I can't say for sure that the body is making it to, to act as an antioxidant in that disease state, but it, that sounds like a plausible idea. Um, but they said, no, 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 erythritol is causing them to be sick. <laughs> but okay, so that's one, I, one flaw. <laughs> right. Uh, Beth, you know what that reminds me of? Yes. Is- I think this happens, oh, it's a whole other subject. I probably shouldn't even get into this right now, but <laughs> cholesterol. Yes, yeah, that's another minefield of another minefield, you detail. Know, oh, the cholesterol is causing this, you know, that's why I've got that. But when the body has inflammation, you know, the, the body produces cholesterol anyway, and it produces it because it needs it. So that's yes, another thing that's, that's right. just so misunderstood and there's so many misconceptions mm. about. But anyway, okay. <laughs> yes, so it does get you're saying complicated. There. It yes. could be, we don't know, but it could be that the body is producing more erythritol yes. because they have... They were sick anyway. Yes. They discovered that. And and one main flaw with that argument that erythritol causes this um, yeah. is that the data was taken from a group, uh, a data set in Europe and a data set in the US. Um, and sorry, I can't remember. Like I've got a whole detailed yeah. article on this, which one yeah. was, I believe it was, yes, the one in Europe. Um, I think uh, erythritol was not on the market yet. 
or it had just been approved like two months before this data set. So right. there, like there were probably very few w- ways to buy erythritol at the time. So these people were not eating erythritol. They were not eating it. it. They were producing it endogenously in the body. So how can they, they were study still blaming it? They were, still they were blaming it. something that they didn't even have. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Goodness. And then the it's U.S. data set. I think erythritol had been pr- pr- uh, approved like one year before, or relatively yeah. recently as well. Not as many now. You have many products with it, but back then you didn't have that many products with it. So um, that's another like key, very simple, basic flaw to the study. And then I can go on about there were other other bits and pieces it, it of the study. Things. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. but they, they were really looking for this conclusion and trying to like put together very odd. It's funny, and I of... well, there's another thing with research. I always go, yeah, who's funding it? Was it by any chance funded by the sugar industry? Yes, yeah, I did look into. I'm that. only uh, asking I... this for <laughs> you know. Yeah, I I think I put it in my article, but I I, I don't think it, there was no obvious. Um, but I was really hoping to find that because if not, I was really worried about the state of science because you know it's it's so. I, I I'm not you know the most amazing scientist in the world, but I can recognize you know whether yeah. it's good science and and it's it's really just so disappointing and worrying you know if if this is the the quality. <laughs> Of, of you know, you are, you are, I, I've heard a lot of this sort of thing in the last few years um, mm. about people from people, as you know, as you say, if you are just capable of reading a paper like this and understanding it, yes. you know, like if you're capable of reading a book, you can assess whether it's well written or not. Yes. So, you know, and I am hearing this from so many different sources and um, doctors that I've spoken to and all kinds of people where they're saying, you know, the the research and conclusions that I hear that the world of research is not in a very good place. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, a lot of people are saying this. So, well, that is very interesting. So in your con- your personal conclusion is mm. that urethritol, because if you'd read the study, Yes. And you went, oh, my goodness, they're onto something. Would you have changed what you were using in your product? Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be here at all if uh, healthy sweetness wasn't possible. And if anyone proves that it is not possible and says like, oh, well, actually, this is terrible, then I would do I would find another job. Like, honestly, like I used to have a an easier job, an easier kind of life in my yeah, nine to five yeah. job. I I. I yeah. I well, really, uh, if any more of these papers come out, yes. I'll come straight to you. Yes. Uh, and and <laughs> there are other really ingredients nice. in the toolkit. Yeah. And, you know, I, I could, uh, you know, uh, change recipe, not use it and so on. But I, I, I'm 100 percent confident um, that that study was totally flawed and doesn't give me any doubts about erythritol as an ingredient whatsoever. Um, and and well, if this is. Honestly, this is absolutely fascinating. And I don't know if you out there have heard all these, the, you know, what people are saying about erythritol, but suddenly, you know, I'm, I'm getting it from all kinds of people. Oh, you know, because we know you eat healthy things. Well, have you seen this? And have you seen that? And my first reaction was, oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 please don't let this be true. <laughs> so, yes. Um, and I think it is very, um, it's dangerous. You know, it really causes, it really impacts lives because people go back to sugar and and then they, uh, you know, they might be fine or they might get diabetes or they might get yeah. uh, heart, heart disease or they might get other yeah. chronic diseases yeah. that are, related to meta- metabolism. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think it's very irresponsible, um, the media and so on that jump on these headlines and create this fear and yeah, well, I guess it's what really, sells. You know, talking about the quality of research and what I've been hearing. So when I heard this, you know, my heart did sink. And normally in the past, if I'd heard something like that, I would have immediately stopped it and that would have been it. But what I've learned now is when these, as you say, they come out in these headlines, you suddenly get all these headlines in the press and gets a lot of attention. Yeah. Is I now um, look at these things very cautiously. And I was very lucky that I met you who could read that paper, but I decided not to overreact. And I, and I did um, start asking around and I, I was I, I did ask a number of nutritionists, but nobody actually knew uh, until I met you. So um, yeah, thank you, thank you for clearing that up. And um, I believe you. 
<laughs> I choose to believe you for sure. Um, you. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Sakiko. And um, I hope that we can um, do another video sometime. Likewise. Thank you, Clems. Thanks. Thank you.